grasslands more of forest we will be studying so forest usually have lots of grass area so the animals which live in this grasslands or forests are lion so what are the adaptations in lion lion usually hunts and kills the animals for purpose of food so it is light brown in color how does this color help when the grassland is dry that means dry grass or hay is brownish in color so this light brown color of lion helps it to hide in the dry grasslands so it can hide hide in the dry grassland because it mixes with the color then it has long claws that is nails like structure in the front legs which can be withdrawn inside toes so from the toes they have long nail like structures growing that can which can go inside and outside so these thing help them in hunting to tear the animal for purpose of separating the skin of the animal these claws help then they have eyes in the front exactly straight which help them to get the location of the prey or the animal which they want to hunt these are the adaptations in lion next we move on to the deer deer is also a forest animal lightish brown in color it can also mix with the dry grass color then it has very strong teeth so that it can eat the strong tree stems and branches of the forest trees then it has long ears why these ears help to know the movement of the predators if some lion is coming to eat this deer the movement of its legs the deer can hear with the help of long ears then eyes eyes are located on the sides so these eyes located on the sides help them to look more in all the direction that is 360 degree direction so while they look in 360 di degrees direction how does this help to look in all the directions so that they will run away if they see a, any prey coming to eat them and ears run at very high speed their legs are modified to run at high speed so to run away from the predators they run at the high speed so these are some of the adaptations of animals in the grassland areas next moving on to the aquatic habitats in aquatic habitats we have oceans so we have studied about the adaptations in fishes now we will see squids and octopus so these squids and octopus stay very deep into the ocean near the almost the bed of the sea and any animal which comes near it they whenever any animal is moving near around this squid or octopus they catch the prey which move around in water for food purpose and breathing is also through gills which use the dissolved oxygen from the water and when they move in water they modify the body in such a way that it looks streamlined like that of a fish usually the body is not streamlined in shape but when they move they make the body in such a way that it looks streamlined so that are the adaptations in squids and octopus then coming to dolphins and whales so dolphins and whales do not have any gills they breathe through their nostrils or blow holes like other animals they do not have gills they breathe through nostrils or blow holes located on the upper part of the head that is the reason sometimes dolphins and whales come to the surface of the water to take in air from the atmosphere oxygen they can live without air for long time in the sea but sometimes they come on the surface of the water that is the reason we see dolphins and whales coming to the surface of the water for taking the air or the oxygen next aquatic habitat is ponds and lakes so plants which live in this ponds and lakes they have their roots fixed in the soil below the water so below the water also there will be soil so in that soil these roots will be fixed and roots are reduced in size roots are not much long the main function of the roots is to only hold the plant in the place and stems are hollow and light they have air between them these stems grow above the surface of the water but leaves and flowers float on the surface of the water so if you see a lotus plant a flowers and leaves will be floating on the plant on the surface of the water whereas stems will grow above the surface of the water so that is about plants which are submerged then plant this is about the plants which are above the surface of the water then we have some plants which are submerged that is totally under the water in these plants their leaves are very narrow thin and ribbon shaped so the function of these leaves is they help in bending 
When the water is flowing with a great speed, these leaves bend and withstand the flow of water. So highly divided leaves help the water to flow easily. That is the function of this narrow thin ribbon shaped leaves in the submerged plants. Then coming to animals, the frog. Frog can live both in land as well as in the water. So when it is in the water, it breathes to its it breathes through its gills. When it is on the land, it breathes through its lungs. Then the webbed feet of the frog. Webbed means spider shaped feet that help to swim in the water. And strong back legs help in keep cap. The strong back legs help in leaping and catching the prey. And these can survive both in land and water. So frogs have webbed feet which help in swimming. And strong back legs help in jumping. Leaping is nothing but jumping and catching the prey and eating it. Frog usually eat small small insects. So that is the adaptation in frogs. Frogs live in both land as well as the water. Next is characteristics of the living beings. That means characteristics for what all different types of features they possess. Characteristics are nothing but the features. So what, usually how can we differentiate between a non-living thing and a living thing? Non-living things, what are non-living things we see around us? Rocks, stones, soil, water, air, dry leaves, chair, table, coins, cars, buses, all the vehicles. All these are non-living things. Whereas what are the living things? Animals, plants, human beings, microorganisms. But even though cars and buses are non-living things, but they still move from place to place. Whereas trees, trees are living beings, but they don't move from place to place. So how can we usually differentiate on a what basis can we differentiate between living beings and non-living beings? So how do we know that something is a living being? How can we say that it is living? So living things have some characteristics which make them different from the non-living. They have specific characteristics which differentiate them from the non-living organisms. So, Human beings are the best examples of the living beings. We human beings, we have many different characteristics through which we can compare the non-living things. Like for example, we do life processes like respiration, digestion, excretion and all these. But all these things the non-living things do not do. That is one major thing on the basis of those life processes we can differentiate between living things and non-living things. So same way clouds in the sky. Have you ever observed the clouds in the sky sometimes seem like they are moving from place to place but still the clouds are non-living things. Whereas mushrooms, all these things do not move from place to place. Creepers, trees do not move from place to place. So living things have some characteristics that means life process going on which make them different from non-living things. So, do all living things need food? So, what are the main, main living things? Human beings, animals, in those animals only insects, animals, microorganisms come and human beings. Do all these things need food? Yes, definitely. Plants make their own food through photosynthetic activity. With the help of sunlight, water, in the daytime, they make their own food and store them in the leaves. That way plants need food. Then animals. Some animals depend on plants for their food and some wild animals eat other animals for their food. That way for animals also food is necessary. Then for human beings also to perform all the day to day activities food is necessary. So what is the need for the food? Food gives us energy mainly. Food provides us energy. This energy is required for the growth, growth in human beings, growth in plants, growth in animals. So this energy is required for growth and this growth means to carry out all the life processes, breathing, digestion, brain, nervous activity, excretion, movement, all these are day to day activities, life processes. So food is required for purpose of energy. This energy is required for the growth of the body and for all the life processes to carry out. So then do all the living beings show growth? Trees for example, when we plant a seed it will be 
very small. Slowly two leaves germinate from the seed. Later, small little by little, the height of the tree increases. Then one day after watering it, after all the photosynthetic activity, the tree grows to a huge size. So that way, plants plants increase in size. Their growth increases. Then animals, animals also we see growth. We buy small small puppies. They become dogs. Then small small chicks become big hens. Same way, all the animals which give birth to their young ones become large animals one day, adult animals. Then human beings also. When a child is born, he is very small, a few centimeters in size. But as his age increases, his height increases, his body size increases, both length and width of the body increases. Infant becomes toddler, toddler becomes teenager, teenager becomes adult. The clothes which used to fit to you when you were one or two years old do not fit now. And those clothes which are fitting now will not fit when you become an adult. Why? Because there is growth in our body. Hairs grow as our age increases. There are some secondary sexual characteristics develop as you become an adult. So there is always growth. Same way plants. Plants also show the growth. From the size of a two leaf small as the seed germinates, a plant develops, small plant. Later it keeps increasing in size and becomes a big tree. Like that all the living things also show the growth.